Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm here with Kevin Waldron. If you don't know Kevin, in 1989, he was struggling to grow a fledgling disaster restoration company, and he started on a shoestring budget, no college degree, no real business experience, but also no excuses, and just the hunger to get it done, and um, the stubbornness to make it happen. And so 17 years later, um, he grew to a regional powerhouse with five offices, over 200 employees, um, a lot of grit, determination, $24 million a year in sales. And you fast forward and he sold the company to a national franchise. And now he does a lot of things. But one thing he does is he helps entrepreneurs and business people make big breakthroughs. And um, so I want to talk with Kevin about a concept that he talks about. Um, and it's how to defeat fear, and it's the power of confrontation. Um, so, Kevin, when you talk to people, how do they feel about confronting things? Because you, you talk to a lot of entrepreneurs. What's, what is people's natural reaction to that? That's usually, usually not a good one. Because <laughs> so, when you talk about confronting, you, know, you need to confront something. Um, for most people, it has the con- it has a bad connotation. Like mm. you don't, most people don't want to be confrontational because they think it means aggressive or or being an ass or whatever. But to confront, in my mind, means simply to squarely face. That's what it means. So if if I'm looking away from you at the camera, I'm not confronting. But if I come around like that, then I'm I'm squarely facing you. If I'm squarely facing you. Um, I can deal with whatever's in front of me. Hmm. Do you feel that, I don't know, I feel that you're good at that. Were you mm-hmm. always good at that? Is that your natural ability or tendency? Because some people make, well, that's Kevin, right? He's confident. He can just, he just blunt and he does it in such a nice, eloquent way that makes you feel that you're coming away with something that he was so nice, but he actually just gave you a really harsh piece of criticism. I mean, that's, I, I've heard yeah. you in a room give people really tough advice and you did it in such a way, but you confronted it head on. It did it in such a way that made them feel good about themselves. So I'm curious, is that a natural skill set? Did you develop it over time? How did you develop it over time if you did? That's a great question. I don't think it was natural for me. I mean, I think growing up, I probably had as much fear and trepidation because, again, who wants to confront things? Because if you do, it usually doesn't end well for most people or you think you're going to lose something. You're going to lose either um, money, reputation. People aren't going to like you, you know, whatever. So I think through the years I had to I had to learn to risk losing those things in order to confront Mm. stuff. But I think one of the ways that I do it is I can be really blunt and I can be really clear but it's always done with love, mm. right? Like that's the underlying thing for me. So with my one-to-one clients, um, they pay a lot of money for me to be really blunt with them. Um, and the joke in my sessions is always, you know, if you want a friend, buy a dog. Uh, <laughs> and I have Don't a dog. Don't buy Kevin dogs. <laughs> Don't buy me. Um, no, because I take it really seriously. You're paying me a lot of money. Um, to help you produce a particular result, and it's not doing you any favors if we, you know, dipsy doodle around things. Um, but again, I think my clients are really clear that anything that we talk about or anything that's delivered from me, it comes comes from a place of love. I want you to love what it is that you want, and I'm willing to be blunt and be intrusive to do it. Mm. So that goes through your mind of really, it's almost painful for you not to tell it to them than to tell it to them. Like some people maybe who confronting maybe it's more painful for them to tell it to someone than to not and yours is more painful to not tell them because you feel that you're not being true to them or yourself is that that's a hundred percent right um and things for me regardless of what you're dealing with they don't get better by themselves Hmm. right i I, my coach used to tell me if there's something in the way her distinction was don't walk over the trash Meaning, if there's some piece of trash between me and you, mm. every time I meet you, I have to walk around the trash to be able to talk to you. Just pick the damn thing up and deal with it. Mm. Um, and the ways that I watch people do that, uh, there's a couple of ways that they avoid confrontation. Um, 
one, they, they just ignore it completely. Like they walk over the tracks, they just pretend the issue's not there. But then it keeps coming back to bite them on the ass and then they wonder why they're, they're not getting the result they want. Mm. Um, sometimes they'll, um, they'll do what's, what I call 10-foot pole in it. You know, so they'll pretend that they're taking it on, but the actions that they take are so far removed from actually being able to, to impact it, it doesn't make any difference. Um, and like we talked about earlier on, on another um, segment, um, as soon as you confront something and you squarely face it, you usually see that things aren't as scary or as you know mm. bad as they end up being in your head. Hardly ever, as a matter of fact. There's a fear. Yeah, it's a fear. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and I think it, it's most basic, the confrontation thing, is the fear of not being liked, right? Like you're going to lose somebody's affection or lose somebody's respect by being clear. Um, I think that's a human thing that's in all of us. I don't think it ever goes away. It's still there for me. So for as blunt as you acknowledge me to be, you know, I still have a, you know, I still want to look good. I still want people to like me, you know. I still clutch my pearls when I think somebody doesn't like <laughs> um, But here's the deal. It doesn't stop me. Right. right. And that's the key. And when people can tell it comes from love yeah. and that you actually give a crap about them, um, it's much easier to be honest. So how do you deal with a situation or is there an example where, let's say you are confronting it head on, but the other person decides that they're not going to. So then you're trying to get them to confront it. You're confronting it. Like, I'll give you an example for me. Yeah, Sometimes, like, let's say something's going on and something's bothering me and my wife will confront me on it. Like, what's going on? What's wrong? And I'm like, I don't want to talk about it. Like, I, I don't, you know, maybe I don't even say. Sometimes I will say I don't want to talk about it. Sometimes I just am like nothing. Right? And she then has confronted me. And I have not confronted whatever is – maybe I didn't even realize I was in a – not a bad mood or I wasn't like my chipper self or something like that. So sure. I, I'm sure this happens with other people too where maybe you confront it, but the other person then – you have to get them to confront it too, right? It takes two people to confront it. So I don't know if you have any strategies on – having the other person, you're confronting it, but the other person is not confronting it. And you've probably given advice to people and they denied it or whatever the case is. Well, yeah, I mean, people can deny your advice. I mean, it's a good example with your wife. Um, if you confront it, if it's an issue for you, let's say in a relationship, so it could be husband, wife, or it could be um, manager and employee or uh, entrepreneur and uh, customer or whatever, if one person brings it up and the other person doesn't want to deal with that, um, then we now have created a bit of trash. Now, you don't have to deal with it in the moment because mm -hmm. maybe in the moment your wife says, hey, what's up? And you go, I don't want to talk about it right now. Right. Well, she can do one of two things. She can either say... She can press well, me 10 times. <laughs> yeah. Dude, we are not going to bed until we land this. Right, exactly. Major props to her for doing that, by the way. Oh, totally. If you just said, hey, listen, I just I can't take it. I've had a horrible day. It just, just, I'm not in a space to speak. Then she might say something like, great, I get it. You're tired. Um, let's table it. But we are having this conversation tomorrow at 9 o'clock. I won't be escaping can't. it, trust me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can't be running at the back door at 8 in the morning. Yeah, so like, in, I, th I find that when we do that, when somebody doesn't let you off the hook, right? Um, and they go, yeah, you can go to bed tonight. I get you're tired, but we're having that conversation tomorrow. Secretly, um, we say, we don't say it out loud, but we say, oh, thank you for holding me to your account. Mm. I don't really want to deal with this, but thank you for being the one that's not going to let it go by. Right, totally. And with all of your um, advice and experience, you always want action. So for this, what's the next you know, you talk about challenge, action, what should people do next when, you know, there's probably stuff they're not confronting. Right. In the area, um, if you're up to big things in life, and most of the people listening to this probably are, uh, whether it's a business or, or whatever, um, there's at least one thing in your business or your life right now that you're like, yeah, I don't want to talk about that. Or, I don't want to deal with that. Right. Pick that one thing because that's the thing, whatever energy whatever stuck energy there is around that problem, that's affecting everything else that you've got that actually mm -hmm. has gone well. 
So pick that one area. Um, and if you're kind of chicken, pick a smaller one to start. Um, and pick it and just confront what's not working about that and look at it and go, all right, what's not working about that situation? And then figure out what's the one thing, the one conversation you need to have. Because that's the other thing about confrontation. Um, sometimes it's about something you just haven't done and you need to have a conversation with yourself. But most of the time it's going to involve a conversation with another human being. Right? So wherever the first conversation needs to be that you need to have, pick up the phone, call somebody, walk down the hall and, and go meet that person and tell them what um, issue you have with the conversation. Tell them about your commitment to resolve mm. it, even though it's clearly no resolve right now. And say it from a place of love and say, right. a, say it from a place of, um, you know, we want, we want to get this thing moving forward. But it has to be specific, no generalities. So, like, if you don't like broccoli, um, you don't get to just confront the fact that you don't like broccoli. That doesn't mean anything. Pick a specific situation. Yeah. yeah, as you're saying that, Kevin, a lot of times I feel for myself when I'm not confronting something, it's because I care about that person and I don't want to hurt their feelings or I don't want anything to go bad. And so thinking of it from a place of caring or even saying that, like the reason I'm hesitating on this is you know I really care or whatever the case is probably would help me confront more things if even though I just said that before I said whatever was confronting right for that person so thanks well for here's the deal to, so to, con to confront your question yeah. or to confront your statement there if you really care about them right or, or then you'll care about them enough to bring it up and totally, get it moved totally. right because totally. if you don't if you say you care about them and you just let it lie for a while you're not doing anybody any favor totally totally. Um, and then you, you mention a Buddhist teacher. So what does the Buddhist oh, yeah. teacher have to do with this? Um, there's a wonderful teacher. Her name's Pema Chodron. Um, she's a Buddhist monk. She's probably about 80 years old now. She lives in Halifax, Nova Scotia, I think. Um, and she wrote a book or an essay called How to Defeat Fear. Hmm. Um, and it was a story of this sort of young warrior girl that said, how do you defeat fear? And I'll let, you know, people go on the web and find the story for themselves but the the upshot of the story is the young warrior asks fear how do i defeat you and fear says um here's what happens i speak really loudly i get right in your face um <laughs> the young warrior was like yeah you do um and the key is fear says but if you don't do what i say then i have no power over you hmm. um so for all of us, I don't think, when we get fearful, it's not a thing that shows up called fear. There's sounds and images that come along with it. Sometimes they're really close like that. If you just don't pay any attention to them, um, you can still keep moving forward. So where can people check out more of the leadership, you, your emails, the videos? Where should they go? Uh, go to waldronleadership.com. And you can actually sign up so you reference the emails. I do an email and newsletter that goes out to my list every Sunday morning at 6 o'clock. Um, it's called Ready for Monday. And if you go to that website, uh, you'll be able to figure out how to sign up for those emails. Get your week started right. Go to waldronleadership.com. I read them. Uh, W-A-L-D-R-O-N, leadership. Thanks again, Kevin. Thanks, Jeremy. That was fun.